and taking part in this. God bless you all. Uh, today's a special day. To everyone here, um, just uh, from me to you, uh, good morning, and uh, let's let's get started. And really, um, let's dedicate today to all those that have served and fought and died for our country and for all of our veterans. And all the veterans out there, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Friends and citizens, I'd like to start by thanking you for asking me to be a part of today's uh, ceremony. Ceremonies like this are extremely important in our communities. And I want to start by taking a moment to recognize the Patrick Henry chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution for putting this on. Your continued service honors the veterans buried here and across our great nation. The legacy you're continuing remains an example for those that follow, strengthening our American bonds within our community, our union, and our democracy. And well done by our color guard. Commander Hawley, your troops look sharp, well done. Please join me in a round of applause. I've done, a, I've done some marching in my day, so that was uh, pretty good. <laughs> uh, Memorial Day is a very special day in our nation. Once a year, in the last Monday of May, the nation honors the men and women who have died serving in the United States military. As a combat veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan, having personally attended many memorial services over the year, today means a great deal for me. Memorial Day is a day of reflection and recognition to the service of those who paid full price for our freedom. And for me, this is special. On June 13, 2010 in Kandahar, Afghanistan, my vehicle was targeted by an improvised explosive device and then a rocket propelled grenade struck the vehicle, sending shrapnel through my legs and wounding four of the soldiers in the vehicle with me. I wanna tell you it was a traumatic and crazy situation but we instinctively relied on our training to win the day. Many, surger, many soldiers earned the Purple Heart that day. As your Purple Heart Memorial states here in the Texas State Cemetery, my stone is red for the blood they shed. The medal I bear is my country's way to show they care. If I could be seen by all mankind, maybe peace will come in my lifetime. What was first observed in 1868 as Declaration Day, Memorial Day has brought us here today in front of the graves of two American Revolutionary veterans, Robert Rankin and Stephen Williams. I'm humbled and honored to stand in their presence in this sacred place. This hollow ground, the Texas State Cemetery in the middle of Highway 165 is a special place to hold this ceremony. It's a very calm place in a very lively city and a place where you can learn Texas and American history ranging from Lieutenant Robert Rankin, right here, to Stephen A. Austin, up the hill behind me, both having watched the birth of two separate nations that eventually became part of the same. Another towering site here is that of a different General Davis, the Greystone of Texas veteran, Brigadier General Edmund J. Davis, who fought in the Civil War for the US, United States Army to preserve the Union and later became the 14th governor of Texas, who later created the State Guard of Texas, which became today's Texas National Guard. Also on these grounds, and perhaps more familiar to recent memory, is that of Lieutenant Thomas Landry of Mission, Texas, and the University of Texas. You might know him better as Coach Landry of the Dallas Cowboys. Lieutenant Landry was a veteran pilot, bomber pilot during World War II who completed 30 combat missions and even survived a crash landing in Belgium. And for your information, he wanted to be a B-17 pilot because his brother uh, was also killed in action as a B-17 pilot. Each of these Americans lived a life of service to their community and nation. Each believed in serving a purpose bigger than themselves. Each of them answered the call when the nation needed them. And you'll find these traits very common when learning the history of veterans. I am, for one, thankful for places like this to help remind us of their stories and I'm thankful for each Memorial Day that offers a chance to hear them again. The Texas State Cemetery is certainly full of history and inspiration and on this Memorial Day we've offered a chance to slow down and reflect on the service 
and sacrifice that the veterans who have given us the freedom we cherish every day. I'd like to once again thank the Patrick Henry Chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution for hosting this ceremony here today. Your continued acts of service to our nation and this great Texas community are an inspiration for future generations that will ensure our country's prosperity. God bless you, God bless, bless Texas, and God bless the United States of America. Thanks.